Why, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Voice of the Rings. I'm your host and guide, Zola and Today, we're going to do an in-depth view at the class Lore Master, which used to be my second most played character besides Zolan was my Lore Master here, Grandal. So, with no further ado, let's go through this. We're going to do like we did in the other in-depth guides, which I'm going to go through quickly the uh, trees for the character, because it's really important to know. But we're not going to go quite as long as I did with the brawler, because it was a little bit too long, I felt like. So, we're gonna go through this real quick. Now, Lore Masters have a lot of skills and a lot of things. Quick little overlay, you're someone who just wants to know some about Lore Masters right off the bat, and you might not be able to be here for the whole video, which I understand. But if I do, if you do, I do earn it, don't forget to like and subscribe. We do all Lord of the Rings content on this play channel. Um, so, Lore Masters are the controllers of the battlefield. They have a pet. They can heal their allies a little bit. They're not main healers, but they definitely have the ability and maybe a three-man to heal pretty well and keep someone alive. Um, they have amazing buff potential and amazing debuff, which for people who might not know what that means, debuffing means you make the enemy you know, have less defenses or weaker or slower or something like that. They also have amazing crowd control, which we talked about in the other videos in depth, which basically in my combat video, which is crowd control is basically holding people down, right? So for example, they have a root where they can root people and they're held down. They have a daze, which you do need to know the differences between these. And I'll explain them as we go through the skills, but there are a couple different kinds of things. There's knockdowns, which are basically, you can't get out of them. There's stuns, which are pretty hard CC and roots, all right? And then there's dazes, which is kind of like, or a riddle. Um, which is burglars do riddles, which are kind of similar, which basically anything you, if you hit that component, they're going to get out of it. A stun, you can keep damaging them while they're stunned. A daze means you can't touch that enemy or he'll wake up the moment you touch him instead of being stunned for 30 seconds, right? So those are the differences. You need to know that's kind of important for a lore master. So they're buffers, healers. They can also dish out really good AOE damage with this area of effect and their magic damage, high magic damage, many different kinds, a lightning damage, fire damage. We'll go through it you know, as we do as we do this, okay? Let's open up our character thing panel here. I'm traded into the damage tree right now. But again, there's the three different trees. You remember with trees, whatever you're traded into, everything is one point that you have. If you put any other points in anything else, it'll be um, two points on the other trees, right? That's just how it works. Except for the exception of some classes that have a secondary tree that just helps, which is like the brawler class, their secondary tree still gets one point. It's a little bit of an exception there, but for that, but just to throw that out there. I hope you have a nice drink or something to relax while we talk about this. And let's have some fun and learn about the Lore Master. All right, again, when you're doing a trait tree, whatever one you trade into, this bar over here will change differently. And as you put points into that tree and get down it, it will bring, give you more and more skills. And you'll see as you're trading, right? So if I'm gonna say respec real quick, right? It's gonna cost me money, but I'm gonna respec again into the fire tree. We're gonna talk about the fire tree first because it's a fun one to use. It's lots of lightning and fire damage. So as you can see, the first one is Master of Fire. This is a flat 15% increase with all three points in it. We have tactical damage. Tactical damage means any kind of magic damage you do. So this could be fire, um, ice, any of them, right? Like a light damage. So pretty much all your damage are gonna be, um, so Gust of Wind is frost damage. So you have frost damage, He has, they have fire damage, they have light damage, they also have, um, a cracked earth is considered fire damage. They put it under fire damage. So it's gonna be those four types, pretty much. It's gonna be frost, fire, and light damage, and lightning. Those are going to be your four different elements, basically. It's like, the air, you're an airbender. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna make Avatar Last Airbender references. All right, tactical damage. So 10% uh, tactical damage. And then uh, we have Cracked Earth, gets more damage, sweet. Now, as you can see, since we put points in here, we now have this ability, Improved Ignition. 15% chance, um, cast out damage from Lightning Strike and Lightning Storm. So you get a little extra psh, um, damage there on these different uh, Lightning Strike and uh, Lightning Storm, but we have to apply it to get it right now. So then we also have, again, these are all gonna be benefits. All the ones on this left side, whatever tree you're traded into, they're gonna benefit your main tree you're traded into, whatever you're using. All right, they're always gonna be benefits. So again, right here, there's our four <laughs> master of the elements. Oh, look, they made an avatar reference right there. The four elements, no, just kidding. Fire, lightning, frost, and you basically 10% damage to all your damage. So just a damage buff. 
And then we have knowing knowledge of the storm, excuse me, a bunch of lightning damage increase. Again, as you can see, the red tree is basically the damage tree or the DPS tree, which stands for damage over time in any MMO. So you, I'm sure you know that unless you're a new player and I understand, don't feel bad. That's why I'm that's why I'm trying to be very precise on everything I say. So you don't I don't phase over something and someone's like, what does that even mean? <laughs> Because I hate that in guide videos when someone just phases over something without explaining what the terminology means. Uh, lightning storm. So this is basically going to upgrade um, the lightning. Uh, it's actually a different ability. Lightning strike and lightning storm are two different abilities. Um, so this one will be put on my thing once I uh, once I apply these. I'll earn that. Uh, fierce lightning. Uh, Twenty percent chance of lighting skills to ignite targets. And again, that ignite target thing that uh that means they can actually set them on fire kind of thing so kind of fun so you could trigger frosty All right, we're going to show you what the skills look like in a minute here okay fend them off uh trigger sword damage uh basically you get more parry and evade and avoidances and and each one gives you a little bit different bonuses but it's just pretty nice to have you might as well just put it there if you have enough points ring of fire this is a fire ability which also gives a debuff to your enemies when they're in it which is very important again i hope you're reading these things when i'm hovering it it shows you what what you're upgrading is on the left and what skill it's upgrading or using is on the right okay so you know the difference of what i'm looking at um mighty wind 30% chance of Gust of Wind to spread embers. Again, you have an ability called embers, which we will talk about, and Gust of Wind can spread it. So that's what this is, it increases that. Nature's Fury, this is you basically summon a hurricane. All right, frost damage and lightning damage within this ability, kind of cool. And fire shield, you will need to wait five seconds after shielding expires to trigger a new one. Okay, your fire skills have a 25% chance to raise a protective shield around you, boosting your defenses and reflecting fire damage at attackers. So that's pretty cool. It basically gives you some bonus defenses, and when you they hit you, you basically have like, think of it like mage armor, right? If you're talking like D&D, right? Boom, and it hits you, and it, it, it attacks back though. It's like a reflection, or League of Legends, it's Bramble Vest, right? All right, there we go. There's some other game terminologies. Um, rapid Fire, this is, you must have this one if you're doing DPS build. Skill inductions. This is going to be very, very important if you're a lore master or any of the mage classes. When you're a melee fighter, you click and your character hits, right? There's only a, a there is a time between he has, you know, time to hit, but with, they have to cast. Casting time is skill induction, okay? So it's like when someone in a movie is like, roy, 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 you know, it's like <laughs> making all these references. Dragon Ball Z, right? Where he's like, Holy God, he's just charging forever. That's That's a skill induction, right? Okay? Now everyone knows if you don't know that, if you're a little bit newer to the MMO or any game genre like that. Slow burn, burn embers pulses. This, this is how many times burn the embers will stay on someone doing damage. Again, it'll increase how, how long they're on burning for those seconds. Because once you hit them, they stay a certain amount of time, but that'll increase it. And then we have the last one, dry kindling. 10% chance to apply two stacks of burning embers at once. So, and that goes up to 30%. What that means is, just hold on to that thought. We're gonna, burning embers is a big one with lore masters. We're gonna talk about that right now. And then what I like to do is I like to just throw some points into these, which basically this is a buff. Um, or excuse me, it's a debuff. Uh, debuffs your enemy's physical defenses. So see, again, it's using two points each one. So I like that one. This debuffs their tactical defenses. And I love to have a uh, storm lore, which is an ability. It's really nice. So um, did I, I forgot one. Yeah, I forgot this one. I was like, there. I have too many points here. I forget any others? Nope. All right, sweet, we'll just do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I took two. Okay, just making sure. All right, so we'll play that back. Now my skills are back how they were before. So now let's talk about the Lord Master's skills in the red tree. And then what we're gonna do is, and again, I will do a few timestamps for you guys. So we have this beginning opening, talking about the red tree, and then we'll have doing the skills. And then I'll have the other two trees, right? But, um, and we'll look at their, some of their skills too as well. So again, it's really nice to have these dummies here, even though these people are kind of in our way, but let's just go through some of the damage skills first, right? So we have Burning Embers. So Burning Embers is a fast induction. It's 0.9 seconds. Again, if you read right there, it tells you all this right up in this little, this little panel. So a 0.9 second induction. So the, um, Basically what happens with it, it has an induction of 0.9 seconds, so it's very, very quick. So if I left click right here, right, or you can click one, whatever one you have it on, 
it'll cast really quick. Now, what happens is, if you look up here, there's a debuff. If I keep throwing it, it will actually stack embers, okay? So it says uh, resistance is tactical damage. If they resist it, they can resist it. It bleeds over time. As you can see, it's doing damage over time, right, on the target. And um, it does an instant damage, which is very high, and then it has a pretty decent bleed. The bleed is fire damage. It does it every two seconds for 16 seconds more because of our thing. And it also slows their movement by 30%, which is really, really good. Okay? Burning embers with them. So it's pretty darn awesome. And I believe you can stack it. 30 seconds. Let me try it. Let me just throw it again here. Yes. Oh, well, it, it does searing embers. There we go. So it applied searing embers again. And then I believe this one, a basic burns. Yes. All right. It does do what I was thinking it did. So if you notice, this one is very cool. This hits up to three targets. It's called Improved Wizard's Fire. Okay. So this one is a basic doodle of burns your foes. If the skill is used while your companion is flanking the enemy, you will be healed. What does that mean? What, your companion. Well, this is really important to know. If you look up here, I have a bunch more skills, right? Some of these are, uh, you get battle pets as a lore master, all right? So I'm gonna summon my bear. So this is one of the first ones you're gonna get besides your raven, all right? So if you see this bear right here, right? I named him Edward, okay? Um, it gets a whole new bar here. See this whole new bar? So basically what happens with this bar is, I usually like to leave it right here. It's a control thing, right? So I can, I can left click on a target without right clicking because right clicking would attack it, but I'm not a ranged character besides my spells, so I won't shoot with a bow or anything. If you're up close, right, if you right click, your character's gonna start auto attacking it, right, with his stuff. If you notice my bear immediately attacked the target for me. So if he attacks from the back, that's called flanking. It'll say a little buff. And what I can do is when I use improved wizard's fire, it'll actually give me a heal too. It's a little side. Roll. So I'm gonna tell him to stop. So, or he automatically will stop because it de because it's a dummy, right? So I have a couple abilities here. You can put this on, right click to toggle it, right? O off and on, there we go. All right, so you can move them around. So that is return to master. That'll automatically make it come back to you. And this one is already on, the defense one. You can move it around to, to, to these different ones, okay? This will always be on one of these. So basically this one is passive mode. Your pet will not enter combat unless you command it to. These ones are the commands, these first three. Okay, this can be a little confusing, right? So first command, if I'm left clicked on it, I say attack. He will go after that right now. He's gonna, you're gonna eat that thing, right? So he's attacking it for me. Then I could say follow, which means he'll follow me. And then I'm gonna say stay. So if I click stay, if I walk over here, he shouldn't follow me. He should just stay there. Right now I'm gonna say follow. Here he comes. Whoa, super fast bear. Okay, so do you see the difference? So those are the commands. You also have this one, which is passive mode, which again, they will not enter combat if you attack. If this one's on guard mode, your pet will enter combat to defend you uh, or itself. So if it gets attacked, it'll it'll fight the target. If I attack something, it'll fight the target. Or if I get attacked, it'll fight the target. This one, toggle assist, when enabled, your pet will attack targets that you attack. So I could turn this off by left clicking it, but I have this on with the green. Basically when I attack, so right now if I attack that with let's say wind gust, right? We'll talk about wind gust in a minute. He didn't attack it, but let's say I attack it again with embers when this is on, right? He'll attack it now. Okay, there's the commands for that. Wonderful. I'm gonna have him stay. And now I could have him return to master, right? If he's not, um, he's in combat. I can't do it in combat. You can't, ha has to be out of combat to return to master. The instant teleport. You can really glitch out games with that otherwise. He's got a few abilities. You can turn them all on auto if you want. I don't leave. Okay, he just did it himself. Um, yeah, this one, uh, Roaring Challenge. This is great. This is where the bear is awesome. This skill forces the target to attack the bear for five seconds. Basically, he's your tank, right? Which you can heal your bear, too, if you left click on him and use your heals. We'll talk about heals in a minute. Um, then we have Bear Hug, which has a cooldown. He'll automatically use it if you have it on right click, or you can just left click to have him use it whenever you want to. But I like to have it on automatically when he attacks. He basically gives him a nice big hug, and they get stunned for three seconds, which is nice. He also has Shatter Armor, which basically for 30 seconds, they will take 10% more melee and tactical or uh, ranged damage, excuse me, incoming ranged and melee damage. So that means my damage as well, because it is ranged, right? Even though it's not... Yeah, you get what I'm saying. So he gives me a buff to my damage, which is really, really awesome. So anyway, really cool. So that's how you control him. Now again, if you want to dismiss your pet, you're gonna right click on his portrait or right, or, um, oh, actually it's right up here. 
his health thing. I don't know why it's up there, but I'm gonna bring it down. By the way, uh, there we go. I have a video on how to move stuff around if you need to know. But there it is, his health. I can right click on him. I can say rename if I wanted to rename him. I'm not going to though. And I could also say dismiss. He will vanish. Now I can summon a different pet. Now, as you notice, these top ones are all pets that are fighting capable pets. These ones down here are lore master specific cosmetic pets, like this cute little dog. It's actually a lore master ability you can learn. Then there's also cosmetic pets, which if you notice, this shrew is a cosmetic pet. So I can also summon it during one of my lore master ones, right? Now here's one issue though. You can't summon your combat pet when you have one of your little lore master ones summoned, okay? And you can just right, left click on them, right click on their thing, pet, dismiss right there's also a command but sometimes it's just easier to click i think but those are so these ones down here there are some more ones here so we have the bear you also get a raven i have this the raven are all the same these are just different color ravens so i'm just gonna get one you'll know the raven ability he has the exact same commands except he has different skills he has one that makes fire the target take more fire damage for a minute which is fantastic he also has one that it makes um the target do less ranged damage and a higher chance to miss so that's good against ranged units that you're fighting he also has evasion which gives himself a be able to basically he's dodging and weaving right and he's stronger for uh 15 seconds so again pretty cool so that's the raven again they have a lot of hp but they would be stronger the pets would be stronger if i was specced into the blue tree which we will talk about in a moment okay so we're just talking about pets right now so again you can see all the cosmetic pets here um i mean these are not cosmetic these, this is still a war pet he can still fight he's just a different color i just earned him right basically the same raven except he's different colors right the white raven i've got the frost raven it has nothing they, they are exactly the same abilities they're just different looks all right that i've earned or bought you can sometimes buy them in the auction shop. Now, let's talk about the one of the next main ones you'll get. So you're gonna get the bear, the raven, and the lynx early, right? Here's the lynx. He is automatically stealthed, okay? So the lynx has an ability too, where if he isn't his stealth, he does a surprise attack, does a bunch of damage. Same commands again. He also has the eye of gorge slash. He does a bunch of damage in front of him, right? He hits three targets in front of him, and then he has a five target slash. He's the DPSer out of the three, pretty much, right? He's not as good for buffing you, but he's really good for maybe helping you, you kill a target if you're just solo, that kind of thing. But watch, when I have him attack from stealth, he will crit. Look at that, he did, he did 11,000 damage. It's pretty good, right? And then he'll do his other abilities too. So anyway, he's a pretty cool little guy. Okay, so that's that's the Link's abilities. Um, again, I have a couple different looking Lynxes. I have this one, just it's literally a different color, same skills. I also have these three spirit ones, which they just basically are a spirit one. But here's the thing with the spirit ones. They actually are not the same abilities. And that, without confusing you, that is because they are basically the light spirit, which you will get, okay? It's a different cosmetic pet. But basically, the light spirit can take on the form of the other four just cosmetically, pretty much. They all have kind of the same thing. But let's also talk about the bog lurker friend of nature another one you'll earn later this is a pretty cool creature so this is one of the bog lurkers they're things and it's usually animals in swamps and they are ranged and they basically are the same commands but they have um angry bees which is a over time belinar damage they also have brute strike which is a they get the range damage is increased on the target by five percent for a little while which is good if you're trying to kill them they also have a really good six second stun that starts a fellowship maneuver which is actually kind of crazy good all right which is one of that a fellowship maneuver is a hard knockdown cc remember i was talking about the different kinds of ccs okay so that's good to know right so there we go there is that pet i'm gonna go ahead and dismiss him we have onlookers here hanging out with us uh, <laughs> new players probably. They're like, why is this high level guy right here? All right, um, and now we're gonna talk about the uh, saber tooth tiger. All right, so here's the saber tooth tiger. He has the fury of the thing. So uh, throat slash another ability, just AOE, right? And it says uh, you have a chance of stunning them. And, the po and opening a fellowship maneuver. So he can also open fellowship maneuvers with that, but just a small chance. And he has frostbite, where basically targets take more frost damage. All right, they lose their mitigation to frost damage. So if you're someone with maybe a runekeeper who's doing a lot of frost damage, or you're trying to use your gust of wind and stuff, 
or anything that you want to reduce their frost mitigation, he's a good one for that. Okay, so the saber tooth is really good for that. I, his name's Lightsaber. I know it's so silly. I named that years ago. Um, and then again, Cat Speech. These are all the cosmetic ones. You can get their cute. You can get these scrolls from the Rift instance, the rate of your curious. And then a lot of people will sell them, but sometimes they're really pricey. So be careful when you buy them. But there's my cute little kitty there. And then again, he is one of the collection cosmetics that anyone can have. So to clarify the pet thing again, there are cosmetic pets. These are pets that anybody can have right here. And if you notice, I don't have these ones on there. See the dog speech up here? Uh, bunny, frog, snake. Those are lore master only cosmetic pet. That's why when I summon one of them, it makes my war mounts that are my war pets above it not be able to be summoned, they gray out because it is a cosmetic, but it's kind of fun because you can have two cosmetics out at once then, right? So that's kind of fun. But again, to dismiss them, you just have to go up to the thing, left click on them, dismiss. Now we're gonna talk about the light one, which has a longer cooldown, but if you notice all four of these are the same. So here is the, I, I named it Lumos. That's a Harry Potter joke, right? You get it, Lumos Maximus? Okay, anyway, doesn't matter. Um, so basically they're the same commands, except this one is a support for yourself. This skill creates a burst of light in front of you, the target causing them to become flanked. So an automatic flank, instead of them have to actually go, the creature had to actually go behind him. And what does that help? Again, it helps improve wizard fire, right? With the ability to heal when they're flanked. So he can automatically cause that thing to be flanked. And then I can use, if you notice, it has a flanking debuff on it now, and I can use this to get a heal. See how I got a heal? Okay. All right. Good. And they also have Nature's Light. This skill costs target en uh, enemy and light, call allies the attack them to be healed. Again, another heal. That's why I got a double heal. Do you notice I got a double heal in that moment? And also any damage returns 5%. Anyway, that doesn't matter. They also have Nature's Gift. This skill uh, brings Nature's Gift to all around the spirits, restoring morale. So they have a heal themselves as well. So he's a healy buff, the Spirit of Light, basically. And again, all the light ones that look like my other creatures are all just, that's why I have the same cooldown. This is the Spirit of Light guy. Okay, sweet. Now you know all about the pets. All right, so now let's talk about some more skills. So we know about Embers, and it's an overtime bleed, and it's fire damage. We know Gust of Wind. Gust of Wind, uh, tearing winds for damage to five enemies in a five meter radius. Well, five meters is a quite a distance. I mean, for example, I can hover this right now, and I'm telling you, that that uh, dummy is 10 meters from me. If I move up to it, it is at, that is at five meters. So basically, Gust of Wind hits an area of a circle this big. Keep in mind, right? Embers is one target. This is one, uh, three targets up to a range uh, radius of six meters, so even bigger, right? A bigger circle, which is this one. Again, that's why I can hit both of those. If I target the middle one, it hits both. It hits all three. See? All right. See, it was a bigger AO a AOE area of effect. Now let's talk about Light of the Rising Dawn. This is like a bread and butter skill for the Lower Master, okay? Um, it's fantastic. It's a super fast induction, um, damage and stuns the enemies and uh mounted a combat anyway it basically that's for if you're doing mounted combat don't worry about mounted combat it explains though what it does if you're on mount if you're mounted on the war steed all right so now three seconds done light damage it's really fast now this thing's immune to being stunned if something's immune to being stunned you can't stun it but it's because it's a dummy most creatures are going to be able to be stunned by that unless they're a boss that has a special ability not to be stunned then you have Cracked Earth, hits up to five targets. It's not a one target. It has a seven meter range, so it's really big. So it's gonna easily hit everything in this whole quadrant, right? So Cracked Earth, after a short time, it said they were all immune, but basically, um, the induction is 1.5 seconds. Unstable Earth deals fire damage to several enemies, eventually rooting them in place. So after a moment, the, after a duration fire damage, they're rooted. Uh, 30, uh, 30 seconds, 25% chance to break on damage. What does that mean? What does that, what does the description mean? Well, let me explain it as clear as I can. Three second duration. Again, we know what duration is, right? That is a time, a period, right? So again, the induction is up there at the top, 1.5 seconds. That's when he's channeling and he hits the staff into the ground, right? Channel 1.5 seconds. Boom, he hits them all. So then they all have three seconds of that fire damage on them. A duration of three seconds and then after that it applies the root which is a 30 percent second root 
and 25% chance. Remember I was talking to you about different stuns, how a root and a daze can be removed if you take damage? Well, it's a 25% chance. So this is a pretty good root. That means if you damage them after they're rooted, there's a, only a 25% chance that they're gonna be unrooted. See what I'm saying? But now if you start hitting them over and over, that 20 hearts chance is gonna, one, 25, 25, 20, you're, it's gonna unroot them, right? If you start just beating on them. But if you hit them by mistake, they might not be unrooted, okay? So basically you think of it, their foot's stuck in the ground, right? It's cracked earth. They're like, they can't move. It was a, a moving enemy. All right, so that's what that means. Now you now you know what those terminology means. Now we're gonna talk about improved sticky gourd. There's a regular sticky gourd. The fire, the fire tree makes it improved. It hits five targets, all right? It burns them, right? So basically it leaves fire on the ground for two seconds. It's very powerful and you can see all the numbers there, how long it lasts and stuff. But we're gonna just use it. Really fast induction. And basically they're both on fire now and they're both bleeding. And by the way, it did apply embers. So it does apply embers too. It's like a super ember ability, okay? It's a very long cooldown though, compared to embers that was only a little while. But as you can see, it really just keeps on bleeding. I mean, it killed them, right? The thing. Now we're gonna talk about Ring of Fire. Isn't there a song about Ring of Fire? Anyway, we'll move on. Uh, induction, very quick again. Remember, a lot of these are really fast right now because we're in the red tree. A lot of the inductions are faster because you're in the DPS mode. That's why it's good for doing soloing. Unless you want to go blue tree a little bit and have your pet be more helpful. But again, your pet's still really strong, even on the red tree. Um, an attack flaming circle upon the ground. You do a bunch of damage initially, then for 20 seconds on the ground, you you reduce all of their block, parry, and evade by a big, pers big number. And then it expires out of combat for a short time, so it will disappear if it's out of com if you're out of combat. It won't last as long. Effects applied to the enemy within five meters. They take a bunch of fire damage. All right, so we're gonna do this. So there's the fire ring. So all of these have will have less things. Now it's gonna disappear really fast because we're not in combat anymore. So it should go boop in a second. Oh, maybe it'll last the full twenty seconds. I don't know. Maybe. It I guess it still thinks we're in combat with the thing, that's why, so that's good. That's why I use these training dummies. It helps us so I can see the ability. So anyway, it's a cool looking ability, but now let's look at one of my favorite Lord Master abilities. And this is the one I always comment in a lot of my videos in the old PvP zone. If you can't find where the fighting is, look for the lightning bolts. In, let's look out of the valley. You see a lightning bolt hit somewhere, you know that's where the fighting is because Lord Master the lightning bolt. All right, so basically, this one, you need to know another ability in conjunction in conjunction with this ability, and it is Ancient Craft. It hits up to seven targets, 10 meter range in front of you, debuffs enemy armor value with a handful of uh, thrown metal. If Ancient Craft trait is a third rank or higher, enemies will take extra damage from lightning, okay? So again, the duration of this is 30 seconds, but basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna toss this onto them, and then I'm gonna, channel lightning storm and it's going to do and again as you can see it made the whole screen flash and if you were way over there no doubt you saw that from a half a mile away um it's a very powerful skill this is basically back in the day with pvp it was so funny i had to tell you one fast story just because it's great warg people who play wargs they'd come out to try to kill the lore master and lore masters have a special buff that keeps them from being stunned War, wargs hate it and detection. So lore masters are very good against wargs in the lore, in the PV, in the PvP zone, which are the class and the evil side. And basically, the lore the wargs would try to kill the lore master together, and they couldn't kill him immediately. They all split, and it always one of the wargs would get stunned, and then just the lore master just lay down the lightning storm. Man, I just feel like so many dead wargs just one shots them all. It was crazy back in the day. But anyway, max targets radius seven is very big radius 1.5 second induction 25 meter range. So again, depending how far you are away from the thing. So I can use this pretty far away, right? I can use this for all the way if I'm clicked on the dummy from right here. Right, that's a pretty dang good range. It has seven meter range, so it easily hits all three of those, right? So pretty nice, pretty nice. And again, though, the ancient craft is only a 10 meter range. So that's more for up close if you're gonna use it. So now let's talk about, there's lightning strike, which is uh, calls a lightning strike does one, and then it does fire damage every two seconds for a certain amount of time. Um, this one also does that, by the way, lightning strike. You leaves fire damage every two seconds for 20 seconds. Keep that in mind. They kind of do the same thing. This is just a much faster cooldown. This one's a minute and a half. This one's only 10 seconds. So I can do this one. It's the same pretty much induction. 
a little bit less impressive lightning bolt, right? A little less impressive, but it leaves it on fire, so that's cool. And now, let us talk about... Let's use the lightning strike from back here, because it just looks too cool. Ready? Such a fun skill to use, you guys. Lore Masters are so fun to play. And now let's talk about Nature's Fury. Okay, whirls frost damage around the enemy uh, with a chance to deal lightning damage over time. So basically what it does is it does an instant bunch of frost damage when you when you summon it. It's going to be bigger depending on the target you're hitting because it's a tornado around the target. So just for effects, it'll look cooler on a bigger target. Every one second applies effects to enemies within five meters. So basically everyone around that target is going to take damage too. They're going to take frost damage and they're going to take a 50% chance to get hit by lightning damage that will then trigger fire damage every two seconds like the two lightnings. Okay, so it's depth. This is why it does a lot of different things. It's one of the main ones. So watch right now when I cast this. It's going to cause a tornado around the target, which will occasionally shock things around it. It's shocking the creature. It killed it already. That was very fast. But anyway, now you know the difference. And this guy's like, wow, that was a pretty cool lightning strike. Um, so anyway, it's kind of fun. That's a good one. And then so we, we talked about lightning strike. Now let's talk about these two staff strikes. So you have two up close abilities, okay? You have improved staff strike, which is to sweep your staff at foes, right? Right, like that. You just It's just a hit, right? Max targets of three. For each enemy hit, you receive a buff to your crit chance for the next foe. And it says two attacks, they do one does light damage, one does Belinar damage because of my weapon. So basically one, the light damage is probably for my staff and the Belinar damage is for my sword because it's Belinar damage. All right, that's what the two differences of attack. And again, for every target I hit, it gives me a chance to have more crits for, um, for fire damage skills. So if you can hit three targets with this and get a 15, 30, a uh, 45% chance crit, then use your improved gourd on a group of enemies, there's a high chance it will critical hit and do a lot of damage because it crits really high, okay? Now you have Staff Strike, which is a Staff Strike. Flank, um, if your pet is flanking an enemy, you will deal bonus damage. So the flank bonus, this is similar to the improved Wizard's Fire, remember I talked about? So again, and it also will cause a little lightning strike to do some damage. And that is from one of your buffs in the red tree, by the way. Now, let's talk about some D. Oh, no, one more skill. One more skill in the fire tree. This one over here. I just forgot it was here. Ents go to war. The Ents are going to war. All right, so five targets. This is a really good one. It's only a 15 minute range. Uh, shake the earth if it, as an Ent stomps his foot, damaging and stunning several enemies. It also does something in mounted combat, but it's a six second stun, five minute cooldown. This is really a last resort thing. Does fire damage, but here's the effect. It looks really cool, so don't miss it. Here we go. All right, so again, they're immune to the stun, but it's a very good crowd control ability. And it does a decent amount of damage, especially when it crits. All right, he's trying to attack me back. Stop it, training dummy, stop it. Um, so sweet, now we know a lot of the fire skill damage. Now let's talk about a lot of the other abilities you have okay um oh lore of storm i'm this is something from the yellow tree but we'll talk about it in a, we'll talk about it once we've gone over the yellow tree how about that again i'm going to try to speed this up just a little bit because i don't want this video to be longer than an hour all right so dispel corruption removes corruption certain range removes one tier of up to three different corruption effects from the target so you can you it'll remove a couple different things but basically it just removes corruption which is important if you do a lot of raids one thing that you're gonna have to realize as lore master is you're gonna be controlling many different things in an instance in raid you're gonna be stunning people debuffing people healing your allies buffing your allies uh do, having your pet do things throwing damage abilities throwing debuffs it's it, it's one of the more advanced classes in that regard in, in doing in raids or instances or dungeons if you don't know what instances are in Lord of the Rings Online. Improved sign of command, okay? Five targets, slows the enemy's attack speed and reduces their parry chance. It's very simple. Last 30 seconds, two seconds for that. You just want to keep that buffed on them all the time. Now we have another one, wind lore. They take more damage from incoming damage, right? That's it, mix three targets. Basically they're debuffed from that. Another one, sign of power, see all ends. Reduces the enemy enemy's ability to critical hits. Just another debuff. 
These are just literal debuffs. Knowledge of the Lore Master. This is kind of cool, okay? This is a really cool ability. It helps your whole team, too, okay? So this is not a debuff. This is not an attack, anything. When you click on a target and you use this, it's a minute cooldown. What's going to happen is it's going to bring up a little panel. This is really important because other people are going to be totally confused. So let's talk about it real quick. What is happening here is it tells you the level of the enemy right here and then it shows you its max health it has 250 health which isn't that super great um again this is a training dummy max power its strength uh, alignment it's good it's a good guy this training dummy is a good guy you guys just like to throw that there he's not evil um type he's helping us for this episode special um siege craft species siege craft because he's just basically a little guy uh type normal again now combat effectiveness finesse uh, immune to uh, stuns, roots, mez, or mezes are basically, again, like these, blinding flash, right? Uh, fellowship maneuver, he's immune to all of the stun effects. That's why he keeps saying immune. Resistances, he is feeble. He is terrible against all of these things. Mitigations, he's terrible against everything. These are all the different kinds of damage, right? Me cry damage is from minstrels, usually. Song damage is from minstrel. Tactical is magic. Physical is swords or arrows. Common damage is usually a common sword or arrow. Light fire damage, lightning, shadow, and uh, lightning we just talked about. Shadow damage usually from evil people. Usually can't do shadow damage as the as a good player, as a that's usually an enemy ancient dwarf made damage is and bellerin western yes, those are all different kinds of weapons especially kind of spell uh damage you can have on your weapons depending on the weapon every weapon has a different specialty it's either common bellerin as you can see there bellerin damage ancient dwarf damage or westernist damage some things are weak compared to others so this is where you can check and go hey champions using swords this guy is weak to westernist damage do you have some swords that are westernist instead of common damage that's what this is good for, okay? Frost damage, feeble. Again, we can run outside, we can test this on a wolf. Oops, excuse me, didn't mean to bring up my steam thing. Uh, let's just run outside and use this on a wolf, just so you can see compared to a dummy. Okay, let's use it on this boar, all right? I'm gonna left click on the boar. All right, here we go. Again, he's feeble to pretty much everything. He's not immune to stunts, right? Or them, so I could use blinding flash on him, right? Which, um, I'm gonna try to- I'm gonna do two different things on this guy, so you can know. This is some CC things. CC things. We're almost there anyway. So we'll use him for a minute, for this, okay? Now that we know he's not immune to these things, right? Sticky tar, okay? This does not- will not even aggro the target. Which means, aggro the target means when you cast it, it's gonna make him come attack you. Right? You're gonna do damage to him. This doesn't. But if you look now, he has debuffs on him, right? By the way, I must say I forgot this one little thing. It is a debuff. I take back what I said. It doesn't a debuff. Knowledge of the Lore Master. It tells you their weaknesses, but it also reduces the enemy's resistances if out of combat when used. So use it before you enter combat. Again, it doesn't aggro the target. You can do it ahead, but use it when out of combat. A lot of these don't. This one will also not aggro, I believe. Yep. I, I'm trying to remember. This one will also not aggro. I believe Windlore might aggro. Windlore does aggro. There's the difference. You do need to know this. Okay? Now he's going to try to attack me, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. So now let's talk about these next ones. Bane Flare. Okay? Sticky Tar also reduces their movement speed by 50% and their fire mitigation by 10%. Huge if you're going to do Sticky Gourd, Embers, any of the fire damage on them. So get that down on a big AoE of mobs, then do your Sticky Gourd and AoE them with a big fire explosion. Okay? Uh, Bane Flare, all right? This is great. Really close, range is 10 meters. You get up to five targets. Radius is 10 meters. Basically, it's everyone around you. And everyone is dazed by 15, for 16 seconds, and it says 100% chance um, on damage after four seconds to break. After four seconds, okay? So basically, I'm gonna throw this up in the air. That's what it looks like. Really good against undead and stuff too, and it'll just stun him for 15 seconds. And then after four seconds, which now he'll just be unstunned no matter what. So, oh, one second. Turn that back on. All right. So. So now we know what Bane Flare does. Now, another big one is this is a single target. So Bane Flare is an AoE. Uh, blinding Flash is 30 seconds. 100% chance to on to break. Interrupts inductions also. Blinding Flash is very, very good. So basically, if so an enemy is channeling a magical ability, Blinding Flash will actually interrupt it and daze them. So then they will be dazed for a while, okay? So then you also have Knowledge of Power. This is a very cool one. Fire damage every two seconds for 20 seconds. Um, and it also restores health to you as you use it. So basically, you start sucking the life out of them, okay? So 
Sorry, little guy. Uh, so it also, yeah, so it's it's pretty strong ability. We already talked about Ancient Craft does. It reduces their armor defense and lightning uh, a little bit, depending on the thing. Armor kind of helps with that sometimes. You also have Frost Lore, which is something you can use, which will uh, not aggro, or it will aggro, excuse me, it will aggro the enemy. And Fire Lore reduces their melee damage they do, and the tactical damage is the Frost Lore one. All right, so there are two different ones there. To good to know. Now let's hurry up and finish this video up. So we also have Light of Hope, which you can target on your pet or yourself. It's a single heal, or you can do it on yourself if you want. So basically what it does is, hold on. Oh, I excuse me, you cannot. You can only target it on your pet or an ally. Let me bring your pet, my pet up. So you can heal your pet. I could left click and use uh, Light of Hope. It's just a big heal, wonderful. I also have Share the Power, which is a very cool. If, you're, if your friend runs out of mana during a raid fight, you can left click on them and you can give them mana. It will take uh, some of, I think it costs your own, oh, never mind, it does not cost your own mana anymore. Um, that's pretty cool. Transfer power to an ally or companion. Well, it transfers. It's just so little, I have so much. Um, so it probably does cost a little of your power still. Uh, heal morale. This one you can also use on yourself, I believe. Yeah, if you're not clicking anything, it'll put it on yourself. Basically, what it does, it gives two different things. Water lore, which heals over time. And it also gives a water lore. It just basically means and it lasts for a while. And I believe you can stack it. Yes, you can do it over and over, which is why they can heal one target pretty well in a raid. They can help heal. They also have a great one called Knowledge of Cures. They remove up to three diseases, wound, fear, poison, infect, all the different levels. Again, I have one on combat if you want to know more about that, but up to the strength of where you are at level. It's a 15 second cooldown. It's if yourself or someone you're clicked on or your pet. All right. Those are not skills for the lore master. We have lore of store. Uh, any of these, this is uh, duty bound and strength of human. That's uh, racial abilities. The wisdom of the council. This is a really good one for lore masters. Heals morale in the time of need. Briefly protects you while damaging enemies. Again, gives you a shield of protection. You also, um, uh, they have a chance to reflect 25% chance they get stunned when they're hitting you. It's a one minute duration. It also restores 50% of your maximum health. All right, so it gives you a big heal, half your HP instantaneously. It's kind of an emergency ability. That's why it's a five minute cooldown. All right, good, good, good. You also get the ability called Back from the Brink, which is basically a, re a, ri a revive, a res, as we called in Lord of the Rings Online. So again, it's if you've been knocked out of combat, you know, you're on the ground, you're dead, but as we call it, we don't, get, we don't die in Lotro, right? We, we just get incapacitated or unable to fight anymore. You can revive if a defeated ally who's on the ground. You can only be used out of combat. You cannot use this in combat. It only heals them with 30% health. It's not as good as a res as other classes, but you know what? If you're the only one there can res someone during an instance after a battle, there you go. At least you can do it. It's a cool effect. It lets you blow a little bird out and heals them and reses them, okay? Wonderful. Well, let us now quickly finish up by going to tier book here too. So I'm going to spec into the blue tree real fast. Let's just talk about it real quick. Pet morale increase and damage reduction. Pet attack speed and damage speed up. Um, Inner Flame, this is a healing one you can do with your pet. This one gives you the great eagle friend. This is another pet we didn't comment on because we didn't have him with the red tree, but it gives you the eagle pet. This is one that gives your pet critical chance. Again, you can look over here, what these bonuses gives you. Wisdom of the council damage um, gives more defenses. Kindred increases damage defenses for them. I don't want to make this video more than an hour, so I'm trying to do this quickly for you guys. Hardy Diet, this gives your pet more uh, morale, right? Basically makes them a lot tankier. Um, more uh, morale enhancements. Again, uh, there are damage. This is all pretty much based on buffing your pet up, basically, right? So I'm going to do this, and I'm show you all the... And then we'll look at the skills that it applies, all right? We're, not gonna, we're just going to apply this one side here. So, and then I can just show you the difference here. All right, so apply... So the skills we just got are, we get this one called Catmint. All right, this herb increase, you have to have your pet out. So I'm gonna, it gives different bonuses depending on the pet you're using. Eagle, spirit creature, bog guardian, raven, bear, they're all there. Increases armor, it tells you what they do, right? So I'm gonna summon the eagle. We'll talk about the eagle real quick. Uh, they have, uh, Beak Rend, which is cool. This skill deals damage to some enemies, drains their health, and they gain health. Basically, they eat them. <laughs> uh, fan the Flames, they buff your fire abilities. All right, so that's kind of cool. It does more damage if the person is um, under the effect of burning embers, which we know how that works. I also have one called a murder of crows. You summon a murder of crows to tear apart your enemy. So it does a bunch of Belinar damage every one second for 15 seconds. They get increased mischance, increased incoming damage when you're damaging them, all that kind of stuff. Let's go ahead and summon these birds right here on this thing. 
All right, that's pretty awesome. Look at that. Okay, that's actually so freaking cool. What a cool ability. Um, so that's that ability. And then we have this one. I can trigger this, and that will buff my eagle. Right, you can see his buffs down here. If you notice, my, my eagle has 146,000 health now with those new buffs. Inner Flame heals your eagle, I think, while you channel, and heals you as well. So it's kind of a buff for you and your thing at the same time. Also gives uh, them fire damage and lightning damage for 20 seconds. So you get some buffs to your damage. Again, it's really relies. They also have something that's very important. They have sacrifice. This skill causes most characters when you die, your pet disappears too. But when you get incapacitated with the eagle pet, it will fly over to you and revive you. And it will disappear, basically sacrificing itself. And you will revive with 50% health and 25% morale power. Very, very cool. Morale is health in this game, right? Very cool. The pets that they have that. Again, nothing else changes. If you notice some things, Wizard's Fire is an improved Wizard's Fire. A couple things change. It's not improved sticky board, just regular sticky board. So there's a couple slight adjustments and changes there. Also, um, we have to talk about another buff up here that I, did, I forgot to tell you about. These are so important. These are buffs on yourself, your pet, or an ally when you're clicked on them. This gives you immunities to being uh, stunned, dazed, uh, combat stances. It basically... It makes you immune to being knocked down pretty much. It's pretty awesome. It lasts for 20 seconds, but the duration is 20 seconds. So um, you can basically keep it on one person all the time yourself or one of your your tank or something, right? And then also detect stealth, one minute duration, three second cooldown. You can basically put this on multiple people around you, all right? So it just allows you to better see hidden enemies. It allows you to detect people that are in stealth better, okay? Uh, improved, I mean, with nature, Summon the spirit, so he's a little bit better. There's a little bit better spirit that basically than the regular one. All right, no, it's, excuse me, it's the same one. I take it back. Uh, also, call of valor. You call upon the wisdom of the valor. You have this all the time to receive some, uh, recover uh, skills, improving a temporary immunity to induction setbacks. So this is very cool. What that means is 10 seconds. You your inductions when people hit you, induction bars will be in channeling your skill. If you can take damage. It'll go back like this, and it might get even canceled but it will try to charge when you're doing it. This makes it where if you're getting attacked in combat, you can still cast pretty much. And also, if you use a long cooldown like this one, if you use this, it does, oh wait, yeah, maybe they don't do that anymore. It will refresh some skills, it said, but it doesn't refresh that big one anymore. You also have Clever Escape, which is basically you can sh get up if you get stazed or stunned if you forgot and didn't have this on you or you had it on your tank, right, side of power. All right, sweet. Again, very cool, the pets, and they're gonna be very tanky now. If you look at my bear, it's at 79,000. He has 120 now. Huge buffs for the pet tree, okay? So that's the blue tree. Now let's quickly just talk about the yellow tree, all right? The yellow tree is basically debuffing, all right? It's and crowd control. It's very, very good. It also increases your healing outcome. So it's basically your big support tree. Think of it as the support tree. Um, Armor debuffs, yeah, do more. Uh, stun durations are longer, your crowd control. Uh, morale, this pleasant breeze is another heal you can use. So power restore is higher. Uh, frost, tactical damage, these are things that look like buff your debuffs. Let's just look together, okay? So this is a longer, this is a CC you, can, you get. So here's the abilities you get when you have the yellow tree, all right? So the differences are you get Beacon of Hope, all right? Uh, it's in a small... Um, Transfer morale to your allies and companions. All right, so it applies uh, to friends within four meters, everybody. So basically, uh, I don't have anybody out. Let me just bring out a pet so it works. So it heals you and, um, oh, do I have to click on him? Oh, it's it's an actual one I have to click on. It's a single target, still, single target. So it's just, a, it's basically you're upgraded. It's the same one as that other heal, right? But it's just a better beacon of hope. It's stronger, and then it does it's very nice. Anyway, um, improved cure of knowledge. It also has upgraded your removal disease to give resistance rating now for that tree. You also get um, your see your your storm lore is a longer CC. It's 5.5 seconds now because of our stun increases. We also get another couple cool abilities that you normally don't have with the other stuff. You get uh, the ancient master, master of lore, right? So fire lore, frost lore skills cost no power and can target up to six enemies. So basically. They are now free for a little while. So basically, when you're targeting an enemy, when this is on, 
they cost to see my mana didn't go down at all. So basically, you're just free to cast. There's also this one that's very cool, crowd control. Test of Wills. 7.5 seconds stun. That's a hard CC from very far range. I believe it is 40 meter range, which is actually absurdly far. That's like way back here. So I cast this like beam of energy, which didn't really do it, but there's usually a beam. I don't know why I didn't do it. Um, and it stuns them for a really long time. Again, he's immune to stun, but it's pretty awesome. Pleasant Breeze. Um, direct a Pleasant Breeze towards your ally to reinvigorate them. Oh, so Pleasant Breeze is still there. So towards your ally. I guess maybe it doesn't, it doesn't work on your pet. Excuse me. Or do I have to use Be Breach of Hope first? Is the after effect? I haven't done, I haven't healed with Pleasant Breeze. It's an after it update for direct a Pleasant Breeze towards your allies to reinvigorate them. This skill is activated when you crit with gist. Oh, gust of wind. Okay, so it's some with it's with gust of wind. If I crit, now I can use Pleasant Breeze just as an after effect, and it, it's an area you target. Did you see when I click it? Then you need to hover your mouse in a location and left click on the ground, and it'll target that area to heal people. This is a targeted heal. All right. Now, if you look, our tactical and frost are a little bit better. Okay, and then um, we also have this, which is kind of cool, knowledge of warding. It, it's basically like the tar ability, but it makes it where you can put them on top of each other and miss, and tactical damage increases more. So it's another debuff thing, right? So that's pretty much it for the blue tree differences, and then your heals are going to be more powerful and stuff. And you can read through all these bonuses here that you get on the side as well. Um, and did we have... trying to see if they did the um i think they moved the root skill let me just double check for us real quick here oh i'm excuse me there's two that I, we did not look at here there is herb lore which is one i knew that, that i remembered i used to have it's in the yellow tree when you get it it's a 30 second root 50 percent chance to break after four seconds so it's kind of like the bane flare but it's a root and it's a 40 meter range really far three targets eight meter range okay and basically what happens is when you're clicked on a target and you use it um, here I can just click on this and use it. It basically just roots them all in place. And then there's called Air Lore. Air Lore swirls around your target ally. I'm gonna use our pet here. And I'll just right click it. Alright, so I don't where does my pet? Where did he go? Oh, he's way out there. Come back to me, pet. Where are you going? Share the power. Oh, you can also instantly share the power to your pet, which is kind of cool. Why is he just running off? Come back to me! I don't know where my pet's going. He's just running off into the distance. Anyway, that doesn't matter uh, <laughs> at this point. Basically, air lore is another ability that allows you to basically just buff your pet or an ally for a little while. And they take damage reflection and stuff. And I believe it just costs six pounds. It lasts on them as long as you're within range for 40 range. It just costs mana every second. But you can have them on it for infinitely. So anyway, that is the yellow tree, my friends. I hope that helped you guys out. We did it within uh, about an hour here. And you guys have a wonderful day in Middle Earth. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I would love to answer it. If I miss something you think or you're confused on, let me know. Uh, thank you to all my patrons for your support. If this helped you out and you earned it, I do a lot of Lotro and all Lord of the Rings content. Subscribe button's there. Next episode for guys is up there. And Lotro content, my main stuff's over there for a Lotro tale. You have a wonderful day in Middle Earth. I am your host and guides on Iron Shield. Hope this helped you out with the Lore Master. They're a great class. A lot of fun. A little hard to learn. There's a lot of abilities. But once you get them, they're really fun and they're very versatile. So you guys have a great day in Middle Earth. And if you want to have pets and be a mage like Gandalf, you know, you want to be a Lord Master. Have a great day in Middle Earth, my friends. We'll see you in the next episode of Voice of the Rings.